There are some stories that translate across countries, cultures and endure for centuries, appealing for their universal features. Fantasy is one such genre, as foreign lands with magical creatures or concepts are familiar in their being alien. The more specific, the better. Other genres have to be more general, relying on good versus evil, black and white concepts that need no background or cultural touchstones. Animation relies on fantasy for so much because it widens the gamut of storytelling to forego realism. In fact, almost all of Studio Ghibli's most successful features rely on fantasy or fantastical elements. That's Hayao Miyazaki. But what happens on the opposite end of the spectrum? What happens when, instead of broadening the scope of storytelling, we zoom in to a microscopic level? We find the late Isao Takahata. Takahata often liked to take a deliberate opposite approach to Miyazaki. This meant animation more focused on realism and even more serious tones. Grave of the Fireflies, the first Takahata animation under Studio Ghibli, could not be more tonally different than Castle in the Sky, Miyazaki's first Ghibli production. Though animators make their business from studying the minutiae of human life, Takahata was a master of it. When it comes to the specifics of childhood, one would think the experiences vary vastly from country to country or city to city. Only yesterday, one of the studio's lesser known films proves that theory wrong. It follows Taiko, a young Japanese woman travelling outside of Tokyo as she reminisces about her childhood, school life and developing womanhood. It's hard to imagine where those experiences would overlap for anyone other than perhaps a Japanese woman. But what Takahata realises so masterfully is the emotion, the nostalgia. He develops a universal childhood, which draws on the feeling held by all not only in the specifics of childhood experiences or traumas, but the blurry, rose-tinted memories. It's a uniquely adult story, told through a stereotypically young medium. That is where Takahata shines. In the flashback scenes where Taiko imagines her younger self, the images are all in pastel colours, faded at the edges with unfinished backgrounds, in stark opposition to the solid blacks and blues of the modern scenes. This recreates the feeling of haziness and uncertainty one has when recalling memories, especially of childhood. It also helps to distinguish the two timelines. Takahata draws on such specific experiences, such as being embroiled in childhood gossip, failing fractions tests, or the excitement felt before eating something new to only be bitterly disappointed. Regarding the latter, in a Miyazaki film you might expect the pineapple to be wondrous and magical, like nothing Taiko had ever tried before, as that is arguably the more filmic and entertaining outcome. But Takahata makes it disappointing, which speaks to his pursuit of realism within his animation. It shows the mundanity of life, which is in itself a universal concept. It's essential in order to relate to the human experience, to show the moments that might not otherwise be regarded as filmic. Takahata's films often meet the criticism of not needing to be animated, that the same film could be made in live action. Though moments like this, where Taiko leaps through the air as a display of young love, could not be as enthralling when done live. Only through animation could Takahata achieve the feeling and emotion he gets from this scene. Animation allows for a contrast of realism within his own films, where realism can easily give way to a visual representation of emotion. Childhood itself can be represented in the same way, whereby the specific experiences blur into the raw emotion. It is simultaneously the specific and the emotion, merging together to form this concept, childhood. A concept that translates across cultures, countries and time itself. Only Yesterday encapsulates this better than any live-action film ever could. <laughs>